we're going to look at earthworms now, one of my favourites of all the creatures. Uh, 7,000 different species uh, involved in, 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 in actually making uh, compost faster, uh, four times faster than conventional compost. And we want to build humus, we want earthworms back on that soil, we want them back yesterday. So they're tremendous from that point of view. But they aerate the soil, they aggregate soil particles and create these little, uh, these little aggregates that gives you the crumb structure, that most beautiful of soils. Uh, they move organic matter around in the soil. They'll come up and grab a bit of stuff and take it down and compost it. They'll, um, they produce in their gut some organisms, a whole range, a really neat little range of organisms, uh, bacteria that aren't found anywhere else. If you haven't got earthworms, you haven't got this really beneficial group of organisms in your soil. Uh, so they don't digest with enzymes like we do. They incubate their own organisms in their gut, and those organisms do the digestion. But the, and, and, of course, they decompose, as we mentioned, very rapidly. But look what comes out the back end. Look what comes out in this stuff here. Seven times more phosphorus than the surrounding soils. Ten times more potassium, pretty expensive nutrient. Ten times more than the surrounding soils. Five times more nitrogen. Now we're starting to talk about minerals in very large abundance three times more magnesium, and of course the most abundant mineral, calcium. You couldn't have 10 times more calcium, it would be physically impossible, but 1.5 times more calcium than the surrounding soil. In fact, where do they get the calcium from? They've got their own little gland that adds. You've, not only have you got a fertilizer machine, this bloke's a fertilizer machine, he's also a lime works. He adds calcium carbonate to everything that comes out the tail end. Now, uh, massive impact in terms of aeration of that soil, because each earthworm owns his own burrow, and he'll fight for that burrow no one goes on his burrow. And you've got burrows right through your soil, of course. You've got amazing aeration right down into that soil. Uh, but as he comes up, uh, he's, uh, as he goes down, after being up here and grabbing a bit of stuff and dropping a bit of poo and then heading back down again, he lines the entire, the entire burrow, his burrow, with a whole bunch of yummy food for microbes. And you get this massive counts inside these burrows. And when he comes up again that night to drop his poo, he sucks like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and sucks up all of those goodies uh, and comes up, and some of it, of course, comes out of this wonderful biological activity, comes up here, uh, but um, as he goes down, he sets it all up again. And this is his burrow, and this is your airway. You don't need spike rollers when you've got these things in your soil, but here's the figure. The holy grail of biological agriculture, you want 25 earthworms per shovelful average any time of the year. Obviously, they're going to go down a bit in dry conditions, but that's the ultimate. And what does it mean if you can achieve 25 earthworms per shovel? Well, I don't know if you've ever bought uh, earthworm compost, but in our country, uh, well, about $100 a tonne is doing pretty well if you can do it for that. Well, if you've got 25 earthworms per shovel for this fertiliser that they're producing, this earthworms castings, you're producing 300 tonnes per hectare. Now, 20, oh, I just said $100 a tonne, that's $30,000 worth of free fertiliser. You're not doing any other inputs at that point. You have struck pay dirt, literally, and you're going to be smiling, literally, all the way to the bank. We've got guys that have got there now. They don't buy anything from us anymore. They don't need to. And that's the aim, to get to a point where you are completely self-sustained. I've got one guy, Graham McNally, uh, who's now runs an organic shop. He sold his farm because they put those big, uh, and he didn't have any choice. They just come in and put those huge, big, uh, high-towered, high-tension high uh, power poles. And he was aware that that's not necessarily good living under it. So he said, bugger it, I'm selling up. And he's actually set up quite a successful uh, fruit and veggie uh, set up with mostly organic stuff. Uh, but I went out to his farm when he was in his heyday, and he had quite a big farm, and a lot of farmers providing for him. And he had a whole business uh, processing and selling this grain around the world in little cane bags, this organic and spelt, and some of these other uh, better grains. Um, but I went out into his field. And he had a field there that he'd fertilised according to a balancing program 14 years ago. Perfect balance according to an Albert program and nothing at all since. 14 years, nothing more uh, since except cocktail cover crops. Nothing else but cocktail cover crops. And he's won two of the last three at that point, two of the last three top soybean yields on the Dalian Downs of some of the most fertile soils in the world. Uh, and I walked around that paddock, 27 earthworms per shovel fall. That was a secret. 27 earthworms, you've got to feed them, that's what the co cocktail cover crops do. Um, but, boy, you get that happening, and it is a really nice story. So seven reasons to bring them back. You've got a lime works. You've got minerals from down deep that they'll go down and drag back up and drop it on as poo on the top. Uh, composting four times faster, so you're making humus faster. Um, they incubate their own bacteria. The whole There's a big craze in our country for what's called earthworm juice. People uh, create the earthworms, uh, and 
and, and they run the water through the earthworm castings. And they don't even harvest the castings. They just and they sometimes run it through three or four times to concentrate it up. And they're harvesting those unique microbes that if you haven't got earthworms in your soil, how many people have got earthworms in their soil? Just so I get a feel for it. Yeah, here, here we have. Anyone else? Oh, we've got a few others, three or four others. I mean, often in some of the places like Potch, there's only three hands went up the day before yesterday when I asked that question. And there were 115 large-scale farmers there. So uh, we've got a bit of work to do to get some of these earthworms back, but many people didn't realise why they needed them. Uh, it's quite uh, annoying sometimes with the work we do on a very large scale now with very large golf courses around the world because, you know, we finally get some action and, uh, and get rid of their diseases in the green and then they say, oh, have you got some way you can kill all those earthworms? <laughs> and we say no, yeah, because you've got the little lumps coming up all over. And so they've got to drag, what they do in the end is just drag over and smooth out the castings each morning because otherwise your golf course is going to bang it and your guy's going to get angry on the course.